Hello everyone, in this session we would look at short-term notes payable. In the prior session, we looked at known or certain current liabilities. Short-term notes payable is a known or a certain liability. We will discuss it separately due to its importance and its uniqueness. It's going to involve interest. That's the reason. But what is short-term notes payable? It's a fancy word for a loan. Think about borrowing money from a friend on a short-term basis less than a year. That's what notes payable is. And most companies, they will have some sort of a short-term notes payable, a loan from a bank on a short-term basis. Now, short-term notes payable, to be more specific, are formal promises, written promises, because no one's going to lend you money without you signing a paperwork, a contract, to pay a specific amount of money plus interest at a certain date if we're talking about short-term notes within one year. Now, these notes are critical in accounting because debt is important. And short-term debt, it's even more important because it's going to tell investors, users, your short-term ability to pay off your obligation. And there are key components of short-term payable that we need to be, to be familiar with. So what is a short-term payable? Well, it involves a principal amount. That's the first element or component. What is the principal amount? It's the original amount of money you borrowed. That's called the principal amount. Then there is the interest rate component. The, the cost of borrowing money is called interest. The lender, the bank, will charge you interest for that loan. The interest will be expressed on an annual basis, but because it's a short term, it's less than a year, we're going to have to prorate that interest. We'll discuss this inside the lecture. Also, we have to look at the maturity date. What's the maturity date? That's an element of the note. It's the date that you have to pay back the loan. You will pay back the loan plus interest. So in this session, we will establish a note. Start with the note. Accrue the interest if necessary. Pay off the interest plus the note at the maturity date. So we're going to take a note stable from the beginning till the end. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start with some common scenarios on how notes payables are created. The first classic one is borrowing money from the bank. When the company borrows money from a bank, it receives cash. In exchange, they will sign a note. The note is a... <clears throat> promise to pay this money back. Suppose a company borrows $10,000 from a bank on a short-term notes payable. What's the entry for that? We debit obviously cash because we received cash and we create a liability called notes payable. So this is one way to create a liability by borrowing money. Another scenario to create a notes payable is by making a purchase. So instead of paying cash for an asset, for a car, uh, for a truck, for a building, usually building, it's a long-term notes, uh, for a refrigerator, for office furniture, the company might issue a note. So rather than paying cash, you give a note, a promise to pay. For example, a company purchases a vehicle worth $15,000 by issuing a note. So they got the vehicle, and they sign a note promising to pay the $15,000. That's another scenario where notes is created. So the vehicle is debited. We have the vehicle. Now we create a note called notes payable. We have a liability. A third scenario for creating a notes is when you refinance an accounts payable, replacing accounts payable. How does it work? A company might convert an existing accounts payable into a note. So let's assume you owe someone $10,000 and you don't have the money. What you will do, you will offer to replace the accounts payable with the notes payable. Simply put, you ask for another liability. So a company owes a supplier $5,000, let's assume $5,000 rather than $10,000 in accounts payable. 
they would negotiate doing what? Replacing the accounts payable with the notes payable. So we would remove the accounts payable. We will debit accounts payable. So now the accounts payable down to zero and we credit notes payable. Those are common scenarios for creating a notes payable. Now let's do some accounting for notes payable and specifically interest because what comes with notes payable? Interest. When recording a notes payable, it's important to compute the accrued interest, how much interest we need to record, how much interest we need to record to accrue for this transaction, especially when the note spans over multiple periods. Multiple periods means the note goes, we have the notes outstanding in period one as well as in period two. So the note crosses two periods. So first, let's, com let's learn about the formula, how to compute the interest. That is important. So how do we compute the interest? The formula is the principal amount, the amount that you borrowed, the original amount, times an interest rate, that's a percentage, times time. Now bear in mind that the time when it comes to short-term notes, it's either in days or in month. So if you are computing the number of months, you divide by 12. So for example, you're computing 3 out of 12 months. You are computing the interest rate for 3 months out of, you know, 3 months of the year. Or it, it could be 45 days. You do in the you put in the denominator 360 or 365. Usually we use 360 because it gives us rounding number. That's called the banking denominator. But 365 is the number of days in a year. So make sure you read the instruction whether they want you to use 360 or 365 when it comes to computing interest in terms of days. So let's take a look at an example. We borrowed $2,000 at 12% and 60 days. To compute the interest, we're going to be using 360 days. We're going to take the principal amount, which is $2,000 times the I, so P principal, I interest, T time. Remember what I told you, you have to prorate the amount of time relative to the full year, the full number of days in a year, which is 360, and the interest is 40 dollars. Let's take a look at a few examples. On October 1st, Adam Company has a past due 2,400 accounts payable to NOAA Corporation. So Adam owes NOAA 2,400 accounts payable and they have in there 2,400. NOAA Corp agrees to accept a $600 cash and 120 day 6% the 1,800 remaining. So Noah told Adam, look, if you pay me, if you can pay me $600 now, I will finance the rest. And they agreed on that. So what entry takes place on October 1st? Adam will debit the notes, the accounts payable, 2,400. So the accounts payable is gone. 600 of it is paid in cash. So the cash amount we credited cash 600 and the remaining will be credit creating a notes payable NOAA now we owe NOAA 1800 in form of a note so what we did is we took out the accounts payable we took out the accounts payable Adam got rid of the accounts payable that he owes to NOAA replaced it with a note but the note is only for 1800 because Adam was able to come up with 600 cash reduce the payable by accounts payable by 600 but the remaining balance is 1800 now bear in mind Adam will have to pay this amount in the future plus interest you have to pay the interest because that's the only reason that Noah gave you additional time is because you are going to pay interest if a note extend over two accounting periods interest must be recognized in each period now in the case of Adam and Noah, if we assume December 31st is year end, then we have then this then this note will span over two period. But in this example, we're gonna make this assumption. A company borrows two thousand dollar on December 16th for 60 days at 12%. So now what we did is we created a note. We debited cash. If you want the other entry, we debited cash. We debited cash because we borrowed the money, two thousand and we created a note. The accounting period ends December 31st. 
So what's going to happen is this. From December 16th till the end of the period, we have to accrue interest. So we're going to have to compute the interest from December 16th till December 31st. 2,000 times 12% and that's 15 over 360. Now we have to create another liability called interest payable. So we debit interest expense for those 15 days and we credit interest payable. So notice what happens. By the end of the year, now we have two liabilities. The first one is the original note and the second one is the amount of interest that accrued for 15 days from December 16th till December 31st. Now let's take a look at when the payment is made. So when the payment is made on the books, assuming we did not perform any reversing entries, we have a notes payable and we have an interest payable. So the entry that's made on February 14th, which is the maturity date of the note, when the note matured, the company will pay a total interest, including all the interest, but we have additional interest from January to February. Remember from from December 16th till December 31st, there was $10 of interest. Now we're going to compute the interest from January till February, from January 1st till February 14th, which is 45 days. That's an additional $30 of interest. What entry do we make on February the 14th? Well, we pay off the note, which is we have to debit the note, $2,000. We have to pay the note on that date that's gone. We have to record interest expense of $30, and that's from January 1st till February 14th. Then we have to pay off this interest payable. Now, the interest payable, we paid it off, and we paid in total $2,040. So the $40, $10 for the interest payable, $30 for the interest for this period, which is a total of 40 and the $2,000 is for the note. So this is how we pay off the note between interest expense and interest pay. So this is as challenging as it gets when it comes to notes payable. It's when the notes, for short term notes payable for that matter, when the notes spans over two accounting period. What should you do? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional lectures, addition, additional multiple choice questions that's going to help you in understanding the computation, the journal entries, the concepts. Invest in yourself. Financial accounting is an important course. Good luck and stay safe.